everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar today together with Innovectris. It's our fourth webinar this week, the NX APEC webinar week. So today we are very happy. Of course, we have Andy with me. And also we invited Ting Yu from Innovatrix and also Mate from Innovatrix. Hi, Ting Yu, Mate. Please say hi to everybody. Hi. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. And Mate is going to have a live demo session after the presentation. So his web webcam is occupied by NX. So we will see Mate's face during the live demo sessions, okay? <laughs> yeah, so we see our visitors are still joining. So let's wait another one or two minutes before we give the floor to Mate, all right? So uh, Ting Yu is based in Taiwan and Mate is based in Singapore, right? Yes, correct. And Andy and I, we are both in Taiwan, yeah. So today we have attendees from various countries from Southeast Asia, Northeast Asia, and some partners are from South Asia, like India. So it's a it's a it's a very large group. It's very interesting. So uh, during the webinar, uh, we'll give uh, the the Metrics team will give a presentation and live live demo session. And on the panel, you should see on your right or left hand side. There is a chat button or there is a question button. So please leave your questions during the presentation. And if the question is very related to the part Mate is introducing, uh, we might interrupt Mate to answer quickly, or most likely we'll keep the questions to the end of the Q&A session so that we can control the time much better, okay? All right, so Mate, I will give the stage to you. You may share the screen and start the presentation for us. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good afternoon from Singapore. And uh, thank you, Jason, and uh, thank you, Andy, for uh, having me here. Uh, we really appreciate this, uh, this opportunity. Um, uh, it's not our first time, hopefully not our last time, with uh, uh, NX together on, uh, on your webinar. Um, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Matt Fish. I'm, uh, uh, I represent Innovatrix in the APEC region. I'm based in Singapore. And uh, today I would like to uh, walk you through um, uh, the way how we work together with uh, network optics. So um, obviously network, net, network optics is, uh, is a DMS, uh, video management system um, uh, vendor. And Innovatrix is a face recognition uh, technology vendor. Uh, that both uh, makes a uh, very good fit um, uh, between us. And the product we would like to uh, introduce today, uh, the Innovatrix product, is called uh, Innovatrix Smart Face Platform, which is our um, video analytics and uh, face recognition platform. We call it a platform uh, because uh, it's not only one product for one particular purpose, but it's a platform which is very modular, very flexible with different plugins, different integrations. Obviously, one of the integrations which we would like to talk about today is our NX integration with uh, the Network Optics uh, Studio Management System. Just a little bit of background on um, Innovatrix. So, uh, Innovatrix is a biometric software technology provider. So, our background is not only um, CCTV or video analytics, or not only face recognition, but biometrics as such. Um, so we at Innovatrix, we develop our proprietary software technology, not only for face recognition, but also fingerprint recognition, iris recognition, um, different AI technologies for other image processing uh, uh, use cases like um, uh, ID document reading, OCR, and so on. Of course, today we are going to focus on some of our face recognition related solutions. Um, since on top of uh, our proprietary technology, we different uh, we build different biometric solutions for different verticals uh, with uh, our vision, which is to build instant trust by creating a trusted and secure way of identifying people and um, identity verification using biometrics. This journey of Innovatrix started um, 17 years ago. Um, Here's the first mistake uh, in the slides. Uh, the company has been around for 17 years, uh, not 16 years. 
uh, yes, this is obviously a one-year-old slide. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, along the way, uh, over those years, uh, we delivered um, more than 500 different biometric solutions, biometric projects using different biometric modalities, face recognition, fingerprint, iris recognition uh, in more than 80 countries uh, of the world um, with an estimated number of the users or people um, being recognized or being processed by Innovatrix uh, biometrics technology uh, around 1 billion. So 1 billion people approximately were processed by Innovatrix face or fingerprint or iris recognition. So uh, we are essentially a biometric technology company focusing on large scale um, biometric solutions, including face recognition, of course. So today, the solution we would like to address is uh, Innovatrix Smart Face Platform. So what is Smart Face Platform? Smart Face Platform is a scalable face recognition server or um, edge platform, uh, it can be also an edge platform, which is able to process multiple uh, real-time video streams or um, recorded video footages as well, and perform very accurate and high-performance face recognition, pedestrian recognition, and um, eventually uh, video analytics. Um, uh, let's take a look at the basic features of SmartFace. So basically, SmartFace is uh, is a platform, as I mentioned, which uh, is able to uh, scale and um, process multiple video streams in real time. Video stream processing means uh, real-time face detection, so discovering different faces uh, in uh, the video stream, um, using those faces for identification so we can maintain um, different watch lists, uh, uh, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of faces in different watch lists, black lists, white lists. Um, this is obviously very flexible, so we can have different groups of, uh, of faces being, uh, uh, being recognized during, uh, during uh, face detection, tracking and identification. Uh, we have the same capability for um, offline video processing, which means uh, processing of recorded video footages uh, and running the whole processing pipeline on these uh, uh, recorded video files, basically, not only real-time videos. The main uh, technology advantages uh, which we have uh, in SmartFace or in general in our uh, face recognition uh, technology is that in this platform, we build uh, face recognition solutions for real world situations. Um, when I say real world situations, it means that uh, we focus on a few target uh, areas or verticals which are very specific ways of, uh, or purposes or, or uh, different motivations why we need to use face recognition. We will talk about all those uh, areas uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, and we customize the solution. We, we create uh, specific uh, customized modules which uh, can apply our accurate face recognition on that particular purpose, on that particular use case. This goes with a complete feature set of uh, uh, of different tools, different modules, uh, which uh, are able to, to adjust and apply smart face platform and all the basic capabilities on a, on a particular use case. Uh, this also means that the system is, is never a black box, right? So uh, it's basically built for integration. Um, it can be integrated into any face recognition related solution using any combination of the features. Uh, it doesn't have to be the complete feature set, it can be just a few features. Uh, uh, it's going to be a, a small set of features, a big set of features. It's really flexible. Uh, and of course, it's very easy to integrate and it's hardware agnostic because, because this is the main uh, motivation of, uh, of SmartFace platform to, to be flexible, to be able to use any cameras, uh, a CCTV camera, uh, any resolution, any brand, uh, uh, an IP camera, a simple USB camera, a cell phone camera, um, uh, a built-in webcam of a, of a laptop or uh, a, a special uh, face recognition device. Um, so easy integration and uh, uh, to be hardware agnostic is, uh, is, a, is a key factor for us. While the core face recognition technology, um, which SmartFace is built on the Innovatrix proprietary face technology, is continuously top ranked in the relevant NIST face recognition benchmarks. Um, NIST is the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Um, 
the, the biggest uh, uh, um, independent organizations, the US organization, uh, which uh, is running all the relevant biometric benchmarks, not only for face recognition, but fingerprint iris recognition, uh, different biometric modalities as well. Uh, uh, in, in this face recognition benchmark, uh, NIST has more than 300 um, different face recognition technology vendors. Um, among those, Innovatrix is continuously top ranked in terms of the accuracy and the speed of the face recognition. Now let's talk about those use cases. So which are those specific real world scenarios which we are focusing on? Um, first of all, um, physical security and access control. So using our smart face platform, which is a very generic platform, um, we can apply different plugins, different extensions or integrations to turn the smart face platform into a um, face access control solution, which means this platform running on a server or in an edge environment uh, is able to handle physical barriers. It's able to handle turnstiles, uh, speed gates, uh, an existing access control backend of a, uh, of a building. Uh, so we have uh, our um, hardware level integration with uh, Weekend, with uh, Tricontact, and so on. Plus, we have a software level integration. So if you want to use any kind of camera, it can be a CCTV camera, it can be a, a USB camera, it can be a built-in camera of a face recognition device which is sitting on a turnstile, uh, we can use this camera with smart face to recognize faces in a real time in a very, very unique way. So the way how we implement our face recognition for access control is what we call uh, seamless access control or seamless walkthrough scenario. So basically the way how we implement uh, uh, access control is that um, unlike the, let's call it the traditional way of uh, access control um, where we have to approach the turnstile, uh, there's a face recognition device sitting on the turnstile, we have to stop for a second or two, we have to look into this device, we have to wait another second or two while the face, face recognition is done, and then the turnstile opens. So we do it in a, in a completely different way, which we call the seamless access control or the seamless walks, walks through access control. So there's a camera sitting on a turnstile, which can be a standalone IP camera, it can be a, a high resolution camera, a low resolution camera, it's, it's really agnostic, it can be a built-in camera and a device it can be a camera and an additional feedback screen. It can be a, a device with an embedded camera and a feedback screen. It's really, really flexible. And the way how we implement uh, this use case is that SmartFace uh, using the same face recognition engine, which is used uh, for CCTV, for example, which is much more challenging use case in, in terms of face recognition, is recognizing, detecting, tracking, and identifying multiple faces in, the, in a real time. Which means in such a scenario, if we use the turnstile, there's a camera sitting on the turnstile, the camera and smart face can see these three people. And at this moment, we already know person one can enter, person two cannot enter, person three can enter. So these decisions are already done. We are not, we don't start recognizing faces and uh, running the face recognition when the person is already standing in front of the turnstile and waiting and looking into the camera. We start this evaluation while people are, are at a distance walking towards the turnstile when a person is uh, three, four, five meters from the turnstile, we already know, okay, this is Andy, this is Jason, this, thing, this guy can enter, this guy cannot enter. We also analyze the movement so we can see uh, people walking towards the turnstile. We can also analyze that this person is not walking towards the turnstile, this person is just, uh, just, just hanging, just talking to friends, just talking to colleagues, or, uh, uh, but they're not intentionally trying to cross this turnstile. Uh, so all these decisions are done in advance, and when a particular person gets close enough to the turnstile, which means close enough to the camera, we just trigger an action. Close the door, uh, open the door. Uh, we can also evaluate the distance from the camera of each particular person, uh, the relative position of those people. So we know person one and two, they are close to each other. Maybe person two is trying to tailgate. Person two and person three, is uh, uh, they are far from each other. So uh, all these... Uh, environment specific uh, factors are being evaluated in real time and what we can achieve is a completely seamless walkthrough scenario so if I'm allowed to cross this gate I can just keep walking I don't have to look into the camera I don't have to stop when I get close to the turnstile without slowing down the turnstile opens automatically and I can cross it in a seamless way. The second important use case um, uh, 
of course, a very traditional use case uh, that we are focusing on is video investigation. So this is uh, this is a post-event video investigation use case when uh, we have a bunch of CCTV cameras uh, connected to uh, an X witness uh, VMS with a recording feature uh, which is switched on, but there's no real-time face recognition. So uh, whatever incident happens, uh, and that incident is uh, is captured by one of uh, or some of the CCTV cameras, and we have a recorded video footage, and we want to run a face recognition or pedestrian recognition analysis, we can just take those videos and we can just submit those to SmartFace using, again, a special integration, a special user interface, a special plugin, which is built for this particular use case. We use a, a unique feature called uh, rapid video processing, which means, of course, depending on the hardware resources which we have available, we can process uh, video footage is up to 25 times faster than the actual duration of the video. So just an example, if we have a one hour long uh, video footage, depending on the hardware resources, we are able to process that one hour long video footage within, let's say, three to five minutes. Of course, this recognition um, includes uh, detecting, picking up all the faces from, uh, from the video and identifying those faces in the face recognition database. And the third, um, probably the most common and the most uh, traditional way of using uh, uh, face recognition is public security, CCTV. So uh, very similar to, uh, uh, to video analysis, but in this case, we are using uh, multiple real-time video streams from different CCTV cameras. This use case, of course, is typically associated with uh, uh, using uh, VMS as video management systems. Um, of course, this is one of the um, key topics which uh, we are going to address today uh, when we show you the live demo of uh, Inomatrix SmartFace along with uh, Net Robotics VMS. Before we get there, uh, uh, let me show you a few more things. Um, SmartFace has a few unique features. So besides being one of the most accurate and the fastest face recognition engine uh, worldwide, uh, According to, uh, according to the most recent uh, independent benchmarks, we have a few unique features which are built uh, specifically for some of those uh, real-world scenarios, real-world use cases which we are really focusing on. Um, we would like to show you three different features here. The one, uh, the first is called uh, Watchlist Auto Learn. Watchlist Auto Learn is a feature which enables us, enables SmartFace to keep learning how a particular person changes their their appearance. Right? So uh, this feature is very, very useful and very powerful in use cases like uh, um, access control, time and attendance, um, uh, surveillance of, uh, of an office building, or any kind of use case where the same group of people keep showing up in front of the same cameras on a regular basis, right? So in an office building, if we have CCTV cameras, if we have uh, face recognition for access control, say face recognition for time attendance, the same group of tenants or employees of that office building, which can be tens of thousands of people, let's, let's talk about a huge campus, right? So multiple different huge office buildings, easily uh, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000 people, doesn't matter. So uh, these people keep showing up in front of the same cameras every single day. I arrive to the same office every day. I across the same door, across the same turnstile, I walk into the same office every single day. So the same cameras keep picking up my face every day. But over a few weeks, months, years, my face is changing, right? So I'm getting older, uh, definitely not younger. Uh, I can gain some weight, I can lose some weight. Uh, I can get a different haircut. Sometimes I'm wearing a face mask, which is dark. Uh, another day I'm wearing a face mask, which uh, has light color. Sometimes I'm wearing some face cover, sunglasses and so on. Uh, I arrive to the office in the morning when there is very strong sunlight. Uh, I leave the office in the evening um, when the lighting conditions are not that uh, ideal. So from the cameras and smart face perspective, uh, all these scenarios are very different. And uh, the visual appearance of the very same person is very different every single time, which means it's very important to to keep learning, right? So every single time we pick up the face of, of a person, SmartFace updates the biometric profile of this person and it appends uh, this new snapshot of the face 
to the profile of the person which is found identified in the watch list. So we don't only keep the initial or the original registration or the originally registered photo in the database, but we keep learning how that person looks in different scenarios, in different parts of the day, in January, in November, in three years' time. Um, and this makes the system very, very uh, accurate, exceptionally accurate, especially in use cases where the face and the visibility is limited for some reason. So limited visibility of the face is uh, these days very typically wearing face masks. But limited visibility of the face can be also uh, capturing the face from an angle, not, not from a frontal perspective. It can be capturing the face in very dark outdoor environment. It can be uh, capturing the face in a vehicle, in a, in a, in a drive-through, in a vehicle lane, where uh, the face of the driver is not completely visible. Um, so this first unique feature, which is watch is auto learn, is, uh, is linked to the second um, unique feature, which is accurate identification of faces, even when the person is wearing a face mask, and also face mask detection. So we also explicitly tell whether or not this person is wearing the face mask in any of these seamless scenarios. We will show these, uh, these features uh, in more details in the, in the live demo. So uh, I'm not going to talk too much about this. Uh, it will be better to, uh, to show instead of uh, uh, telling. Uh, but before I start showing, let me show you the last unique feature of SmartFace, uh, which, is, uh, which is really a very innovative feature. We call it passive blindness detection. Blindness detection is uh, basically spoof detection. So uh, the objective here is to recognize whether or not a face in front of a camera is a real, genuine person, a human being, or some sort of fake. Some sort of fake means it can be a printed photo of somebody, or it can be a PC screen, it can be a large tablet screen, uh, with a video of somebody, but not the real person. Right? It can be a it can be a 2D mask. It can be a 3D mask. Basically, anything that is not a real person. Most of the solutions which are out there for uh, for this purpose are hardware-based solutions. So uh, uh, most of the solutions need different uh, special uh, special cameras or special devices to recognize this. We as a software technology, as an AI software technology vendor, we have a completed software-based solution for this. So in the same seamless scenarios, which is access control, seamless walkthrough without looking into the camera, without stopping, CCTV, uh, time and attendance, basically any of those scenarios, uh, uh, we are able to apply this passive line detection, um, which is able to recognize whether or not the person is a real person or some sort of fake. Um, we call it passive line detection because line detection as such um, can be two types, can be active line or uh, passive blindness. Active blindness uh, is uh, usually used in, in other areas like uh, EKYC where uh, the user must perform some sort of activity. So for example, uh, there's a mobile app uh, and this mobile app is giving the user some instructions like move your head up and down, blink with your eyes and so on. And the technology is um, evaluating whether or not this person is following these random instructions. On the other hand, passive blindness detection means that the user, this subject, this person being detected and recognized, does not have to perform any activity. This person does not have to actively try to prove their blindness. We just capture the face, we keep tracking the face, and we know whether or not this person is a real person or some sort of fake. Thank you very much. This is the end of the presentation, but definitely not the end of the whole session. Um, so now let me... Uh, jump to the live demo. Uh, before we jump to the live demo, uh, let me ask uh, uh, Jason and Andy if uh, there are any questions at this stage. No, so far no. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, so uh, let's continue with uh, this demo. So uh, I'm back. Hello, everybody. Uh, that's that's why I cannot use my webcam because it's used in NX Witness, uh, which I think is more important now. So uh, what we can see here is uh, the NX Witness video management system uh, along with uh, the SmartFace integration. So um, now I'm using a, a, a very common um, uh, average laptop. Uh, okay, it's not an average laptop. It's a, it's a gaming laptop. 
which I'm using here. So here offline on this uh, laptop, I'm running uh, NX uh, Witness, this NF NX server, NX client, and SmartFace as the real-time face recognition engine. So what we have here um, within NX Witness is uh, our SmartFace plugin. So I was talking about those real-world scenarios um, which we are focusing on, and we we develop different add-ons, different plugins, different modules of SmartFace which are focusing on those scenarios and applying the SmartFace capabilities on those scenarios. Uh, the SmartFace Analytics plugin is uh, the module which is designed for uh, real-time CCTV surveillance and physical security. So the SmartFace Analytics plugin is essentially an integration between SmartFace platform and NX Witness. So we can uh, analyze the real-time video streams coming from NX Witness, uh, run face, detec face detection, pedestrian detection, uh, face identification tracking, and push all these metadata back to uh, NX Witness in real time. Here in this SmartFace Analytics plugin, we have a very simple configuration of how to connect uh, this platform to NX Witness, which um, metadata we want to push into NX Witness, which analytics events we want to push into NX Witness. And once the configuration is done, we have this very smooth uh, real-time metadata level integration between SmartFace and NX Witness. And we also have uh, the option to create different analytics events. So um, here, if I choose analytics events, I choose uh, this camera, which is uh, my, my built-in webcam, but it could be an IP camera, it can be a, a wireless camera. I could, I could use my cell phone to uh, send an RTSP streaming to NX uh, Witness and then to SmartFace. It doesn't matter, I can choose multiple cameras. And over those cameras, I can choose some SmartFace events. So right now, we are only sending two events when a person is identified or when a person is not identified. So choosing one of those SmartFace analytics events, I can trigger different actions. I can create a bookmark, I can start recording, I can uh, send an alarm. So basically, uh, these are the these are the NX features here. So whatever is available in NX as uh, an action which is triggered by some analytics events that can be used along with the SmartFace events coming from the platform uh, in real time. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the basic um, face recognition features of, of uh, SmartFace. Uh, now I'm using only one camera. This is my uh, built-in uh, webcam here. Uh, um, from a technical perspective, the way how it works is that the real-time stream goes to NX Witness first, because uh, the VMS is uh, considered uh, the, the main system here. We're talking about uh, CCTV and surveillance, obviously. And NX Witness is sending the frames of this real-time stream into SmartFace. SmartFace is running the analysis and sending back all these meta information. So you can see all the meta information which are uh, displayed here in the real-time, which is uh, first of all and, uh, age and gender. This is an estimated age and uh, detected gender using uh, face recognition technology. Um, um, is more or less, um, let's say it's very accurate uh, without uh, revealing my real age, let's say it's very accurate. Um, so yeah, it's, it means showing something around uh, 33, four, five, let's say. Uh, there is gender detection as well. Of course, these features are um, very typical in uh, retail analytics use cases, right? When when we don't have um, when we don't have uh, a watch list, we don't have a blacklist, whitelist, we don't have a list of employees, uh, but we run uh, we want to run some, some analytics, right? So uh, for uh, uh, for retail, let's say. Uh, so that's why uh, where age and gender uh, detection is a uh, is a common feature. Uh, next, uh, face mask status. Now it says no mask. If I use my face mask, I put my face mask on. In a real time, within a, uh, less than a second, uh, it changes the status to mask present. If I pull my mask off a bit, it says no mask. So this is the mask status. And of course, uh, with or without mask, uh, it shows the identification result. So it, it, uh, it shows name uh, James Bond which is um, obviously not my real name. Uh, this is the name I used uh, in uh, SmartFace when I uh, registered my face. So uh, it means that the face recognition and the identification result is correct. Uh, the name is fake. Uh, again, if I put my mask on, um, the face detection uh, tracking still works very accurately. It's very smooth. 
and still the identification result is done. Now it shows my real name, Martin. Right? Um, the, the power of smart face, as I mentioned, is uh, not only detecting uh, and identifying one face uh, in, a, in a frontal perspective, this is very simple, but the power comes with uh, recognizing accurate, accurate recognition of faces in challenging environments. So now let's talk about environments where I'm wearing a face mask and my face is being detected and captured from an angle. So it's not a frontal image, uh, it's an image from the side or from the bottom, from the top, I'm not looking into the camera. Uh, these are the challenging use cases where the visibility is very limited, but yet the face is identified accurately. There are some other use cases. Uh, wearing a face mask and sunglasses, or wearing a face mask and some other cover on the face. I'm not I'm going to cover uh, the camera now, just to, uh, just to kind of end uh, the, the face tracking. And now I'm showing my face with face mask and some head cover, right? So even in this case, when let's say uh, it's, it's only, or, or only just, let's say 30, 40% of the face is visible, still the face is detected, tracked, and identified. Some other cases, um, only one side of the face is visible. Again, I'm going to end the face tracking, so it has to start uh, the whole detection again. And I'm, and I'm only going to show just a very small part of my face. Let's say one, I don't know how, how much is it, maybe, maybe 20, 25% of my face, the whole bottom part and the right side of my, of the top part of my face is uh, covered, but even in this environment, and also there is a shadow, uh, the visibility is very, very low, but still the face is detected, tracked, and identified. So uh, also I'm identified as one of my profiles in SmartFace, which is either Mate or uh, James Bond. I have two different profiles. Um, it doesn't really have a point, but I just have two different profiles. But every time uh, one of my profiles, so the, the right person is, uh, is identified, even if the visibility is very, very low, like, like for example, in this case here. So um, this is uh, smart face features um, in uh, the first uh, very typical use case, which is uh, CCTV surveillance. Of course, we are talking about face recognition with multiple different faces uh, in one frame. There is no there is no limitation actually. There is no like like we can we can detect and process up to five faces, ten faces, thirty faces. There is no such limitation. Limitation is only given given by the hardware, right? So of course, if there are hundred faces in one frame, that will take a bit longer uh, to uh, to detect all the faces and to identify all the faces. But there is no technical limitation uh, in this. Uh, basically, this is this is a requirement or performance inputs for us. So uh, instead of uh, we telling our customer uh, this is the maximum number of faces you can detect, we ask the customer how many faces do you want to detect? You want to detect this, this many faces in one frame? Okay, here we go. This is the hardware sizing. This is the hardware specification you have to use. And SmartFace will be able to detect this number of faces within one frame in real time. So uh, this is the usage in a, a traditional uh, CCTV uh, surveillance slash uh, physical security use case. Uh, now let's move from uh, this uh, real-time use case to another real-time use case, which, as I mentioned, is access control. So now I'm going to uh, now I'm going to uh, switch to uh, to this step. But uh, uh, my bad. Before I switch to access control use case, I also would like to uh, show you another. Um, another dashboard, another interface, which uh, uh, which is a built-in interface in SmartFace. So basically, here in this view, uh, we were using the uh, the real-time stream from the camera in the in, in the VMS in Network Optics uh, uh, witness. In this dashboard, we are using a built-in user interface of SmartFace. This built-in user interface is a, is a web-based user interface. Basically, I'm, I, I, I open the web page here. Uh, it's a web-based user interface, which uh, uh, is not supposed to replace the VMS, of course, because uh, in this web-based user interface, we are not displaying uh, hundreds of different, of, uh, hundreds of uh, uh, video streams, hundreds of cameras. We only display two. You can choose which two uh, cameras we want to display on the right side and on the left side. This is not to replace the, the VMS. This is just to check the stream, uh, to check some of the uh, notifications which are coming uh, directly from SmartFace, 
uh, without uh, going into NX witness and checking the notifications in NX, NX witness. Of course, it's a different kind of interpretation. So here in this interface, we can see the raw notifications uh, coming, coming directly from Smartface. Uh, I'm using two videos here. The one on the left side is obviously my live webcam. And on the one on the right side is a recorded video, which uh, we just keep uh, uh, playing uh, over and over and again. Um, here in this notification bar, uh, we can see two types of notifications. One is a single face. A single face in these notifications mean, means um, a face was detected, but it was not found in any of the watch lists. So basically, it's a stranger. It's an unidentified person. Two faces in one notification means a face was detected in some of those video streams, for example, this guy here, and a matching candidate, a match in the, one of the watch lists was found in the video. So we have these two types of uh, notifications here. Um, currently, we are adding more features and more notifications here with pedestrians. Uh, uh, later, uh, very soon, we are going to add vehicles, uh, other objects, and so on. Um, also, this user interface serve for, serves for managing uh, the system. So here is a uh, very simple, um, user-friendly uh, interface to manage watch lists. So here is a demo watch list where uh, we have all these uh, key profiles. And here is one of my profiles. So uh, this is the profile called Mata, as I mentioned, I have two. I have another profile uh, as James Bond, uh, and I have uh, this original profile called Mata. So, uh, what I would like to show you here is uh, the first feature we talked about, which is Watchlist Auto Learn. So you can see this uh, profile was created initially by this single photo. So this photo was captured by my cell phone. We have a Android and iOS application also with uh, edge face recognition on the device, which can capture a selfie, and this selfie is sent directly into SmartFace to register to a watchlist. So that's how I registered this photo here and created this profile with my with my real name. But there are many, many other photos here. You can see these photos are not uh, taken um, uh, on purpose with a, with a cell phone, for example. These photos are taken by different cameras, CCTV cameras, my, my webcam, during the normal usage of SmartFace. So this is how uh, Watchlist AutoLearn works. You can see the A, uh, this A flag at each uh, photo, which uh, is for auto learn. So every time I showed up in front of some of the cameras connected to this laptop and SmartFace, SmartFace recognized, okay, this person now in front of the camera is Mata. I found this profile in the watch list. And this is a good photo, which we just captured. It's a good quality. So I'm going to extend, I'm going to append this photo to this biometric profile. So we are getting, SmartFace is getting smarter. SmartFace is, is getting, um, is, uh, SmartFace now knows my face much better, not only from one perspective, but from many different perspectives, from many different angles, with face mask, without face mask, looking into the camera, not looking into the camera, different lighting conditions, and so on. That's how it becomes very, very accurate because it keeps learning how my face looks in different environments. Uh, we also have a very simple system configuration here, of course, so uh, we, can, we can configure these cameras, uh, some basic configuration of the face recognition, uh, we have CPU, both CPU and GPU mode, so uh, it's important. Uh, I think we can uh, uh, we can mention that SmartFace is not um, uh, is not dependent on GPU. Of course, using GPU it always gives you some some additional boost in terms of uh, speed and latency, but we don't need GPU. We can run on a completely GPU-less environment uh, in a CPU-only mode, uh, even on a simple laptop or server without GPU. It doesn't have to be a high-end uh, uh, face recognition or image processing uh, machine. It can be a simple CPU only machine or it can be an embedded device as well. We also have edge processing. Um, now I'm going to switch uh, the second uh, camera, this, uh, this video off, um, because now I'm going to move to uh, the access control scenario. So now um, switching the topic from CCTV to access control, Let's imagine that this camera now, here, this is not a CCTV camera. This is not a security camera, but this is a camera sitting on a turnstile, right? So if you, if you remember this scenario here, now we are going to simulate this scenario. And now we are going to imagine that this webcam 
which I'm using, is this camera sitting on a turnstile. It can be a camera standalone on a turnstile, or it can be a camera and a standalone uh, screen, a tablet sitting on a turnstile as a feedback screen to the user, or it can be a, 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 an embedded device with an embedded camera and an embedded screen, or it can be completely without a screen, doesn't matter. Let's just imagine this camera here is uh, sitting on a turnstile and we use it for access control. So this camera goes into NX Witness, NX Witness goes to Innovative Smart Face, Innovative Smart Face does its job, and Smart Face is also integrated with this physical access control system with the turnstile attention. So what happens here? We want to use this uh, seamless access control system for people which are approaching this turnstile. So if I show up in the scene and I get close enough, the system picks up my face and the system says, okay, Matt is trying to cross the turnstile. But we have some conditions here, which we apply on access control. Condition number one, this person must be a registered person who is allowed to enter this building, allowed to cross their stuff. Number two, this person must be wearing a face mask. And number three, this person must be a real, genuine human being. It cannot be a fake. I cannot just hold a photo of somebody uh, who is allowed to enter so I can, I can enter this facility without, without be, being allowed to. Um, so here we can see the, the camera. Basically, we can see what the turnstile camera can see. And this interface here, this is a special user interface for security personnel, uh, which, uh, which is monitoring the, the access to the building. Right? So what we can see here now is a bunch of notifications saying no max. So somebody keeps trying, somebody standing in front of this turnstile keeps trying to enter this building without wearing a face mask. So obviously the, the turnstile doesn't open and there's this notification popping up uh, on the security dashboard of the security personnel saying, hey, somebody somebody keeps trying to enter this building over and over again without a face mask. So of course we reject this entry. What if um, I try to use uh, a photo now uh, or somebody else with a face mask who is not registered? So now again, I'm going to use my cell phone uh, with uh, this lady who is not registered. So this lady now tries to enter, but what happens? There is another notification saying unidentified person. This person is not identified. Oh, this person is wearing a face mask, but this person is not identified. It's a stranger. Again, we don't allow this person uh, to enter. So, okay, now um, I'm a bit smarter. Uh, now I try to spoof the system with a photo of somebody who is registered and also a photo where a registered person is wearing a face mask. So let's see what happens if I try to enter this this uh, this building. If I show such a photo, uh, this this turnstile camera. So what happens is that I show this photo, and the response of the system once it picks up should be. Okay, it's, it's gone, just a second. Yeah, spoof, right? So now this person is this person is identified. We know this person, right? We know this person, this person can theoretically could enter. I'm going to put my mask on so it so it stops uh, stops popping up. So this person could enter. This person is also wearing the face mask, but he's not the real person. This is a this is a spoof, right? This is, uh, this is some sort of uh, fake. So what I have to do, I have to wear my face mask. I have to be a person who is registered and allowed to enter, and I have to be the real person. I cannot be uh, just, uh, just, a, just a picture of this person, right? So this is what the security guard can see here in this interface. And what I can see as the user when I approach this turnstile, again, if you remember, so this is the person who is approaching the turnstile. This is the camera. And here's a feedback screen, which again can be any Android tablet. It can be a, it can be just a, just a screen connected to, to a backend machine. Again, it's completely hardware agnostic. But what I can see when I approach this turnstile is this. So now I approach the turnstile, and on the screen, what I can see is welcome, mother. I keep approaching the turnstile. This is what I can see. Right now, if my face is not there, there is no face in front of the turnstile. We just show a logo, which is customizable, whatever. Now I try to enter. My face is there. Welcome, Matter. The turnstile opens. 
Now I try to enter this building with my mask off. It says, hey, James Bond, please put your mask on. Okay, my mask is on. You're good. Hey, welcome up. If I try to use this spoof, right? So now I'm going to use my photo again. Although it's with face mask and a person which is registered, but it says passage not allowed because this is a fake. If it's my real face with a face mask, of course I'm good. If it's my real face but without a face mask, I'm not good. So that's how accurate, how fast the system is. It's not only a seamless face recognition while the person is walking. Uh, it's a seamless, accurate face recognition while the person is walking, including face mask detection, accurate identification of the face while the mask is on, or there's other face cover, uh, partial faces only visible, and so on. It's still accurate because it keeps learning how that person looks from different angles, different portions of the face. And there's also seamless, very accurate spoof detection. So if that face which is registered and wearing the mask is not a real face, but some sort of spoof, that is also detected immediately and the corresponding action is triggered. This is it in a nutshell. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Jason and Andy, over to you. And uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mate. The live demo session is really cool and it works really fast. Thank you. <laughs> Even yeah, this is the second that. time I, I, I watch I watch this demo. I still feel amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's so fast. Yeah. Like when you like like change different photos or, or wear a mask without a mask. Yeah, and all the the browser application that's building the NX Windows client interface. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. So we have a first question. It's a really good question actually. Uh, how do we get a demo? <laughs> Yeah, very good question. Um, yeah. <laughs> let me switch back to uh, the slide with uh, the answer to this question. Um, so here's the answer. Um, please feel free to uh, reach out to us, uh, to my colleague Tingyu, who is based in Taiwan, or uh, to myself, uh, or even to our friends uh, at Network Optics, uh, to Jason and, uh, and Andy. Uh, uh, we can have a quick chat and uh, we are definitely happy to support uh, demos and uh, evaluation um, activities. Fantastic. Yeah. So guys, please take a snapshot of this screen. You will have our contact information here. So you are always more than welcome to, to ask for a demo license. Okay. Thanks, Mate. And there's another question com comes in. So is your system support while search function? I'm, I'm not sure if I is it is it wild search? Yeah, wild. Uh, I I assume uh can you please correct me if I'm wrong? Okay, so I assume is that uh we, we import a face without with our name in a database so we just use a, a photo to search uh to search uh the database yes absolutely so uh, uh this uh this platform is uh, not only built for uh for real-time videos or, or recorded videos uh but basically the underlying technology is uh is, is our face recognition and face one-to-many search technology which which we use in many many other uh, use cases as well for for law enforcement, just just searching uh, searching photos, searching mugshot photos taken uh, taken at a at a police booking station, for example. This is, this is only one of the mm -hmm. uh, dozens of uh, of different applications. So yes, definitely uh, searching photos uh, from a from a third party source uh, uh, captured by mobile devices uh, from the internet, uh, wild faces, uh, which means. Uh, Non-collaborative uh, users not looking into the camera, covering their face. Yes, of course, absolutely, it's, it's possible. God, so hey, I, I guess it's one of yeah. Andy, after oh, yeah. you. Sorry, uh, Mati, can you turn to the uh, video investigation page in your uh, presentation file? Of course. Yeah, this one. I remember that you said that um, you can import a video into your system and then to do the uh, facial recognition to, to search in the database right for all the faces 
correct? Correct. Uh, so for this one, we 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 also can do a, a photo. To, I mean, to to input a, a photo to search in the database. Mm. That's that's even easier. So yes, of course. So uh, searching a video okay. uh, or searching a, a static photo is just a subset of the whole processing um, uh, or all the steps which we have to do when we process a video. So basically, video search is that we split the video into frames. Uh, we analyze those frames. Eventually, in those frames, we find some faces. We crop those mm. faces. And eventually, in the database, we search those static cropped face photos. So if we already have the static photo of the face, we can just start at this uh, step and we just search the, uh, the the static photo of the cropped face. OK, OK, cool. Got it. Thanks. Clear, clear. So I have a question, actually. It's about the auto learn. I really like the feature because like, like every week I go to my, my iPhone photo gallery or my Google picture gallery, and they will ask me, if this is you or if this is your mother, then I can start to, you know, correcting those auto learn features. So I think that function building the Innovatrix platform is really cool. So my, my question is, is it necessary for the user to like, if we notice that the auto learn picked the wrong picture in the list, do I have to manually delete it or in time, the, the system will just learn and notice that, oh, that one was a wrong pick and then we'll remove that automatically. It's a, it's a very good example to, uh, to use your, your iPhone or uh, uh, on my Android phone, the Google Photos, which, uh, mm -hmm. which do the same, right? So yes, it groups, mm -hmm. uh, it groups those people which, you, uh, uh, which uh, you, you take photos of frequently, so uh, yourself, uh, your family members, close friends, uh, and groups also, so this is this is Andy, this is Jason, this is Tingy, this is Nata, right? And yes, from time to time, uh, it asks you the question, is this the same guy? Or, or you just open all the photos of uh, Tingy, right? And it, it, it asks you the question, is this the same guy or is it a different guy? And you just say yes or no. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, this is this is very common in, uh, in each face recognition technology. So uh, according to the state of the art, none of the face recognition technologies uh, is 100% accurate. When it comes to biometrics, mm -hmm. face matching, fingerprint matching, any kind of uh, biometric uh, biometric matching, it's always about probability. So internally, the system never says yes or no, same person or not the same person. But internally, mm -hmm. the system comes up with a probability. This is 18, 89%, 99%, 99.9% .9 sure it is the same person. This is only 90% sure that it is the same person. And basically, we set up a threshold. Uh, Above the threshold, we say, yes, this is the same person. Below the threshold, we say, no, it's not the same person. But there is always a gray area. In every single face recognition system in the world, there's a gray area mm -hmm. where the system is not sure whether that person is the same or that person is somebody completely different. So yes, of course, eventually, mm -hmm. especially when you handle a lot of data, a lot of transactions, a lot of uh, uh, watch list members in the database, from time to time, yes, of course, it will happen in every single face recognition system that uh, the face matching will end up in this gray area. And uh, in that case, yes, the, the best thing to do is to ask the user, is this person the same? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. Yeah, it's really powerful functions. Like for, for myself, I, I, the, the, the Google album can start to recognize my, my picture like 15 years ago. And some other interesting things like my nephew, he, he was in my photo album like one year old and now he's seven years old. So he looks very different, but in time with the auto learn functions, you know, the, the algorithm can still identify, identify him when he was just one year old. Yeah. Exactly. This is, this is the whole objective. So uh, if I, if I register the system now and then I still use the same system in, in 10 years, then the system doesn't have to, uh, compare photos with 10 years difference. There is no 10 years difference mm -hmm. because it keeps collecting my, my biometric data uh, down the roads over those 10 years. So it always keeps learning how my face is changing. Got it. That's really cool. Yeah. So the other question is like, uh, yeah. So can we do integration with different brands of assets control system? And what should be prepared for those kind of integration? Uh, the answer is yes. In, in every, probably practically in, in, in every case, the answer is 
is definitely yes. So SmartFace is uh, primarily built for integration, which means SmartFace mm -hmm. goes with a complete open API, has many different uh, uh, API, many different interfaces. It has a, a, a very robust, very complete REST API. Uh, it also has a real-time push notification API. So all the events in SmartFace, every time a face is detected, the face template extraction is done, the, the face tracking is, is finished, the uh, face is identified, the face is not identified. There's also push notification coming from SmartFace, which can be uh, received by any third-party system, which is, uh, which is basically the, uh, the system integrator um, eventually, right? Uh, this interface, this user interface, everything that we showed here, uh, this user interface, all these interfaces are using uh, the SmartFace API, right? So this is not built-in interface uh, as such, uh, but this is an interface, this is a user interface which whoever can build, whoever our integrator, our partner is, they can build a similar mm -hmm. interface because through this SmartFace API, every single piece of data, every single event which is inside the system is available. And uh, mm -hmm. Our partner can control the whole system uh, through this API. So yes, definitely, uh, any access control system, visitor management system, security application, um, time and attendance, uh, whatever system which uh, is already in place, it can be integrated with mm -hmm. SmartFace because all the information from SmartFace is available for third parties through these uh, these, these APIs. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. So uh, also when 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 we are performing facial recognition, would it require more computing power if most of the people are wearing a mask, or that makes no differences for the algorithm? It doesn't make a difference. Um, basically, if if we are expecting uh, users with a face mask. Uh, we will switch the, the system-wide configuration to a more accurate mode. SmartFace have has many different uh, modes of uh, face recognition. Basically, there are, there are three basic levels. We call them uh, fast, the balanced, and the accurate. Um, so uh, it is basically what the name says. The fast is the fastest, but uh, it sacrifices some accuracy. Balanced is somewhere in between. It's balanced, accurate, uh, requires slightly higher hardware resources, but it's always the most accurate. Of course, obviously, this accurate, uh, the balanced and accurate modes are recommended for face masks. So once we switch on balanced and accurate, uh, yes, of course, it will require slightly higher hardware resources than smart face uh, in fast mode, but it mm -hmm. won't make a difference whether or not I show up in front of the camera in a face mask. So it depends on the mode, of the configuration, but not on the actual face in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. And I think this is, uh, I, I guess you heard this question is quite open. So I guess it's also challenging for facial recognition algorithm developers. Like how, how, how can the algorithm identify a twin brother? Yes, very, very common question. Um, yeah. So um, face recognition is, uh, is, is, is called AI, artificial intelligence, right? Uh, it's called artificial intelligence because, uh, because these AI technologies are really trying to copy the way how the human brain and the human, human eyes work, right? So, uh, and, and these face recognition technologies uh, use uh, so-called neural networks, which which means it's it's really based on how how the human brain how the how the human human brain works when when you think about this. Your your brain is is also a a, a neural network, basically, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it really copies the way how humans are able to evaluate a visual a picture, right? A picture of uh, of person A, person B, which means. If we have twin brothers which are so identical that even a human gets confused and even a human is not able to recognize them and differentiate because they, they don't have a single unique feature on their faces, then the machine will be struggling as well because the machine is just copying exactly the same way of evaluation uh, as what the human does. 
So the only advantage that the computer does it faster, but it's it's not really smarter. In fact, it's just it's just much faster. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, if, if there are some unique features which human can recognize, then the machine will be able to recognize as well. If there are no unique features and they are so identical that even a human gets confused, then the machine gets confused as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. However, for fingerprints, then that will be identical, right? Uh, fingerprints are unique even for twins. That's great. That's so mm -hmm. And that's also I also I also had another question. When you are doing the live demo, like uh, with a face mask and using a book to cover a different part of your face, I noticed that the there's a rate in the interface, like go from like 40 to 95 and then go down to 30 is that that that's the accuracy rate right uh that's that's what, yeah. the, uh, that, that's what we call the that's what we call the score right so the score is now now 90 something out of uh, out of 100. this score this is the probability which i was talking about a, a, a few minutes uh, a few minutes ago right so uh, mm. when this face is detected in this frame this face is cropped and then this face this static photo is searched in the database. Uh, in the database, let's say I have I have a million photos. So this face, within just a couple of milliseconds, it's is compared with every single photo in this database. So the system comes up with one million different scores. Of course, uh, my face with faces which are not from me but from different people, this score will be very low: one, two, three, four, maybe up to ten, something like this, right? But if I have mm -hmm. A photo of my face in the database, the score will be very high. It will be 80, 90, it will be a very high number. So we set up a threshold that this threshold configuration is, is by the way, here somewhere in smart face. Uh, I can also show you. Uh, if this number is below above the score, then we say, okay, this is a match. So this person is uh, the person which uh, which is the found profile in the in the, in the, in the, in the database, in the watch list, right? Uh, but this score is the probability. So this is what I was, this is what I was saying that the system comes up with a probability, and this says, okay, now we are 99.999 percent sure that this person is not. Or now we are only 80 percent sure that this person is not. But this probability, of course, is affected by the amount of data which the system has, right? So now I just, mm -hmm. I just reduce the amount of data which is available to half. Now, we, now we only have a half of a face. So the score is now only 62. Now the score mm -hmm. is 94, 95, even 98, 99, right? But if I really reduce the data, the biometric data which is available for the system, then of course the probability also decreases. Now, now it's already 30 something. See, because I'm covering more than a half of them. So of course, the more uh, the bigger part of the face is visible, the more data we have, uh, the more confident we can uh, we can be when when it comes to matching. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, there is a, yeah. there is a question from my shine friend. <laughs> he say um in his country there are uh, some Muslim friend right so they were they always wearing the hijab right to to cover the face and uh, we also can do the face recognition for them. So uh, yeah, this is uh, this is very very related to the previous few questions. Actually, it's it, it's it's very similar, right? So uh, we are talking about this use case when uh, a, a quite quite a quite a big portion of the face is uh, is covered. It's not visible. So obviously, uh, obviously this rate, this confidence will will be lower. It's the same for a human. Uh, a human is a human is also not not hundred percent sure because 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 of such a big portion of the face is covered. That we, we we cannot be always hundred percent sure that this is this is really the person that we think they are. Uh, yeah. But the good but the good news is that uh, um, currently our largest deployment of our face recognition uh, system uh, is uh, is used uh, in a uh, a huge country uh, in Southeast Asia, which uh, with a huge population. We are talking about um, more than one hundred million population, um, where um, uh, uh, um, the, the major part of the population is uh, is Muslim, and this uh, mm -hmm. this system is used by the national police of this country, which means the face recognition is 
uh, optimized, tested, and proven in uh, these kind of environments where faces are uh, very typically, in most of the cases, covered uh, for the same reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Is there any other questions to Mate or Tingyu? Oh, there's one more. Hold on. Oh, there's one more. So the question is about how about the data storage capacity limitation on the server? Will you like save the snapshots or you just save uh, an encrypted line of code or would, it, would the database capacity increase significantly? Like every day we capture so many friends, make so many identifications, yeah. So uh, the, the only data that we need um, to, to do face recognition and the matching is this uh, uh, encrypted code, uh, which, which you mentioned, uh, which is called the face template. So uh, in biometrics, we, we call it the biometric template, which is basically always uh, a sample, which is, uh, in, in this case, uh, a face image. But in case of fingerprints, it's a fingerprint image. In case of iris, an iris image. But this image is never used directly for the actual matching for the search. First, we take this image and we convert it into a biometric template. Uh, and this, this biometric template is a, is a very small piece of uh, proprietary information which contains the extracted biometric features of that particular modality. Right? This is the only piece of data that we need for matching. So uh, we can configure the system to uh, not to store any images. So we don't have to store, we can just switch in the configuration, we can just switch off um, uh, keeping the, the whole frames, uh, we can switch off keeping the, the prompt face images. Uh, we can configure the system not to store any image data. We only have to store the face template data because that's what we need for the matching. And the good news is that this mm -hmm. face template is very, very small. It's only one kilobyte per face. So even if uh, yeah. you store hundreds of millions of face templates in your database, yeah, you still don't need a, a huge uh, storage for them. Of course, if you want to store the images as well, then uh, the case is very similar to uh, to video management systems, where you, you even you are recording videos. You're recording videos for 30 days, three months, half a year. Um, so uh, mm -hmm. yeah, then then it depends on the on the resolution and the amount of the image data which you want to store. It's not really related to smart face and the face recognition portion. Clear, clear, got it. Okay, so if there's no more questions, I will call it a day today. Yeah, so Mate, again, thanks a lot for your great presentation and, and live demo. And Tingyu, thank, thank you. you so much for joining us today. Yeah. So everyone, thank you, thank you for, join, for joining us. If you have any questions, and we really encourage you to contact uh, Tingyu and Mate to test the software in your office, yeah. Facial recognition always requires testing. So yeah, <laughs> we really encourage you to, to try that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So, thank, thank you again for thank joining you. us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mate. Thank you, Tingyu. Everybody Bye. take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.